1996, the Dallas Cowboys won the Super Bowl, Dish Network began service, and GM dropped the EV1. Motorola came out with this cell phone that you probably forgot about, or never even saw. This is the Motorola Profile 300E. The E meant it had extra characters on its LED display. Now this phone only has nine buttons in addition to the standard keypad. Very, very simple, but it actually has a lot of features hidden under those buttons. And as we know, that's usually a recipe for disaster, or at least not knowing how to use most of the functions. It's got a couple of other notable physical features here. It has the battery from the Motorola MicroTac, a phone many of you knew and loved back in the day. And a really crazy feature about this is if you could change the battery in just four seconds, you could take a call, change the battery mid-call, and re-enter the call without having to go through the startup process. It would just like snap back to life. I think it was using a bunch of capacitors inside it to do this, and if you were changing chargers, you had five seconds. But you had to go through this process in less than four seconds, typically. Also, if there's a charger plugged in, you can never do this because the charger uh, obstructs the battery coming off of the phone. So you'd have to be in the call, and it would show up like low battery on the display, and you'd have to pop the battery off, grab another battery, and put it back on in four seconds, and then push power. And hopefully, if you were a magician, you'd still be on a call with the person on the other end. This phone also uses the antenna from the Motorola MicroTech. These are the exact same parts. The batteries were interchangeable and the antenna was as well, even though it's obviously much harder to replace the antenna. That is that extendable plastic antenna that you could flip around from the Motorola MicroTech. Another bonus of using the MicroTax batteries is there was a slim version, which would make it even with the phone and give you about a one inch phone, pretty small. Fits in your hand about like that. With this battery on there, you can barely reach around it. Only your thumb can make it to the keypad. And if you have the slim one, you'd have, a, I'd say, a much better grip on the phone. And it was probably lighter as well. The slim one was nickel metal hydride. This is the thick battery. It's nickel cadmium. And there was also another battery that you could use in emergencies that filled the battery pack with AA batteries. So kind of interesting, if you were in a bind and you had household AA's, I think it used six of them, you could fill the battery pack with those, not this one of course, the emergency one, and slap it on your phone and you would be back in business. So, the Profile 300E was an 800 megahertz phone, probably on amps. It's actually really hard to find details about this phone these days. Uh, you can see this one was on Southwestern Bell. Huge shout out to my buddy Paul for loaning me this phone. It was his very first cell phone. He bought it prepaid at a gas station in Dallas. Amazing that phones like this at that time could even be bought prepaid because we know they loved their two-year contracts back then. And this was probably a pretty expensive phone even at the time. The only other features on the exterior of the Profile 300 are its 2.5 millimeter headphone jack, Motorola's proprietary charging connector. This was on everything though, the StarTac, MicroTac, probably even the DynaTac. And if you had the IntelliCharge base station, you could put the phone on a charging base like that and it had a slot for another battery behind that. So you would be ready for your long day of business with two batteries or, you know, come back home and switch batteries and get ready for the next day. So let's power this thing up and check out some of the features on it. Now, I do think it's gonna to need to be plugged in, but it does power up and it was holding a charge for at least a few moments. So we're gonna hold the power button here and of course find out that it no longer holds a charge at all. So we'll plug in our eight pin Motorola charger here. Uh, you guys remember the great lock on these things. They couldn't come unplugged unless you squeeze the sides and pulled the charger out. So you've got the beep there where it plugs in and we have the battery indicator flashing to show the phone is charging. Let's hear that startup sound. Very Russian in its sound stylings there. A beep and now the phone is on. So it does show on on the display while it's on. We have a flashing battery indicator to show that the phone's charging and a flashing no service indicator because of course the bands that this cell phone ran on are no longer used. So the display on the Profile 300 is very simple. We have an in-use indicator in green. We've got no service in red. An orange RM indicator for roaming. Right here we have our three bar battery display. Uh, it can actually show battery voltage in detail if you go into the menu for that and it'll break it down as a bar graph. And then there is a three bar signal strength meter. And of course the rest of the display is your typical LED segment display for numbers and text. We can still hit send today and the phone will freak out 
saying SIN2 and redial and in use and no service are all flashing at the same time to tell you there is a serious problem. Another cool thing to note about the Profile 300 is it was one of the first phones to have a passcode lock. Now, it wasn't the best passcode lock because the default passcode was 123, not even 1234. You would have guessed it by the time you started guessing or the last three digits of the phone number which comes in handy because a lot of people back in the day just wrote their phone number on the inside of the phone under the battery cover. So if you just slid off the battery cover, you could probably figure out the passcode and make calls as if you were the phone's rightful owner. Another cool feature I'm excited to see on this phone is if you press recall and then the pound sign four times, you can see the call timer from the time this phone was manufactured. So one, two, three, four and 43 minutes, which seems uh, impossible. I'd say that's 43 hours of call time. Now the function key references the functions that are in blue on the keypad. You've got function one for menu, function four for battery, function five to lock the phone, and function six to mute your call. Pretty cool to have a microphone mute on your end back in the day that was accessible. So if I hit that, nothing happens because I'm not in a call. If I hit function one, we can actually see in the menu. And these old school text-based menus are incredibly hard to understand with their like clear on, error off. I mean, honestly, none of it makes sense unless you're reading the instruction manual while you're using the phone. It definitely, as I said, buried all of its functions and it's just not easy to use overall. If you did manage to master the old profile and the microtext, it has cool features. It has super speed dialing, which is just speed dial. You can type in a speed dial number and hit call and it will call the number that was stored there. It also has turbo dial and turbo would let you store numbers in between two and nine, where if you just held the number down, it would dial it. So if we hold two, it should, and it did try to make a call for the number stored in two. It found nothing there. If you hold down one, it could either dial 911 or any emergency number you had programmed. Let's check out function battery here. Internal charge on. Well, apparently it's not gonna show us anything about the battery. We have nine customizable ringtones in the profile as well. So here's the first one, standard ringer. Ah, uh, the sounds of the past. I think I would just go with one. There's really not much of a difference between those nine ringtones. Uh, it's just a series of beeps for all of them. And you're pretty much gonna have to figure out whose phone's ringing by uh, who was closest to the phone that was ringing, not by custom sounds like you could today. I've been using this phone for a few minutes and I've found that sometimes really the only way you can get out of the menu is by hitting power and turning the thing off and turning it back on because they, they just made it really hard to exit the menus. Now, a couple other features on this phone that are worthy of note. It has any key answer, which is a nightmare. Uh, I'd say half the time these days, a call comes in. You know, when, when these phones came out, you wanted to answer every call that came into your cell phone. Spam calls weren't really a thing on your cell phone and you were excited to get a call, pumped up. You were like, let me answer my cell phone. This is so cool. Now, these had any key answers, so if you were fumbling around for your phone, you could just push any button and it would answer the call. So you could take the call you probably wanted to receive. These days, you typically want to deny every call that comes in on your cell phone. This thing made that difficult because only one key could hang up the call and every other key could answer the call. And there's another feature that's even more nightmarish these days. It's auto answer after two rings. There's still a lot of Bluetooth head units and stuff that do that for you. It's typically always not what you wanted, especially when you're driving now. So while these were groundbreaking features back in the day, uh, now they're things that I don't think anybody would want. But if you do want them, the Profile 300 is the phone for you. So that is the Motorola Profile 300e, a phone that's existence was kind of questionable because the Microtech already existed and was cooler with its flip case and the StarTech that was about to eclipse it when it came out shortly after. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching Tech Throwback, and I can't wait to see you on the next one. <laughs>